So I was surprised because when I started to search, I wanted to show you how um, this is the subject I'm using for mine. When I do a Google search, when anybody does a Google search on a desktop, you can go right into um, search tools, an image search and search tools and search by high quality image, right? So that doesn't appear to work on the iPad, which I'm quite frustrated about. So if anybody knows how to do that, speak up right now <laughs> and teach me, teach all of us. See what I mean? Like the search tools option just went away and I don't understand that. So when I was searching, I searched on my um, uh, MacBook so I could use my Chrome um, browser and it just helped me out. But I can't find that setting on here and it's super frustrating. Anybody have any um, contribution here? So let me just show you that again. When I'm in just all, there's search tools right there. And that should be apparent and available when I'm in image search, but it's not. Because I wanted to show you how to search for only large images, but I don't have that option on my iPad anymore. And I'm very frustrated by that. Does anybody know how to get that option on your iPad? Okay, so this is what you need to do because you have to have a high quality image or it's gonna look you know, like garbage. So when you click on one and um, you, here's the other thing that's frustrating me. You can't really see, um, I haven't figured out a way here either to find out what the um, image quality is. You know, that's another thing is that you should be able to see um, how many pixels it is. And I haven't been able to see that either. Okay, so that's the stuff that I would recommend in my large image quality search, but I only can see that on a desktop. I haven't been able to figure that out in Chrome um, on my iPad. So maybe that'll become more apparent to you if you're using Safari. All right, so once you've saved your image, let's come to Photoshop. I've got all kinds of stuff open this morning, so let me back out of there. All right, so just looking at my, um, what I have in my, uh, you know, the little gallery lobby of my um, Photoshop area here, you can see that I've been playing with this over the weekend and then so far today. So I'll open up my original one first and show you what the layers palette looks like because um, if I just turn everything off, except for what I had on the very bottom, this was my original file that I worked with. Now, if I kind of enlarge this, what you can see is that it has what's called artifacts. And if I turn on this layer, you'll see how they're, I've highlighted them earlier. All these things right here where I've highlighted in yellow, that's, those are called artifacts. That's where um, the image quality is low enough that Photoshop had to add pixels where it was like stretched thin like silly putty. You can kind of picture it that way in your mind. So Photoshop had to be like, oh gosh, I'll just kind of borrow information from around me and plug it in there um, because there's just not enough pixel information to make it look good. So it's kind of like, ooh, plug it in. So my image was pretty good to begin with, but when I cropped it, I wanted to crop it down from that huge album cover to just his head, like an Andy Warhol portrait would be. So it's kind of concerning, it's not looking good anymore. So you really need the best quality image that you can start with. Um, I was able to manipulate this enough that it pretty much disguises it, but it's a stretch. So you do wanna use the highest quality image possible when you're working um, anytime. Okay, but this is a good example of why. Okay, so maybe your first move would be to come in and adjust this layer um, by playing with the levels. So levels you can get to through um, the three dots here, you can add a clipped adjustment and those options, levels is one of them. If I've already added it, but I can adjust it more to show you what that looks like. Okay, so under layers property, layer properties, excuse me, you can 
um, move these sliders. So this is maybe what it looked like in the beginning, but I've pumped up and adjusted this contrast. Someone on their um, critique, their art critique of the Monet versus um, Warhol uh, art critique mentioned that um, you could hardly see any of the features of Marilyn Monroe because they were just all kind of washed out and blown out. And then I thought that was such a good observation worth mentioning because it's really true. Like it wasn't a photograph that felt super realistic. It really was manipulated so that only some of the details were left remaining. You can kind of mimic that by messing with the contrast in this photo um, beginning with the levels. Okay, so I might kind of mess with this. I don't like how it looks down on that end, but if I mess with this, kind of bring them in, it makes it a lot more high contrast. Okay, so then you can also try messing with the brightness and contrast. And the same thing, if you go up and touch on this slider, then you can bring up the layers and you can do the same thing here and really kind of just mess with this to get it how you'd like. All right, and, and it doesn't look realistic anymore, but that's okay. That works with what we're doing for the Andy Warhol look. Next adjustment is to make it black and white because you don't want the local color anymore, which is the color that um, the photograph originally was. So black and white can also be adjusted right there, okay? But <clears throat> I'm ready to go forward. So the first thing I did, if you look at this layer two here, I'm gonna tuck this all away and show it just as big layers. Layer two has, um, let me do one thing really quick. Okay, so layer two, I added a full layer of orange. Initially, it looked like that, right? So I added a full layer of orange, covered everything up, and um, then I added a mask. A mask on the side is that rectangle with the circle, okay? When you add a mask, you can tell that mask right here. I want this color to end up in some places, but not others. So I took my paintbrush, and by painting black in some areas and leaving um, uh, or painting white in other areas, you tell it where you want that color to be. In addition, I don't know if you caught this, but I had to use my undo because I didn't want to ruin it. I changed my um, layer mode from normal, which looked kind of dull, you know, it looked like just spray paint and stuff, to I tried a whole bunch of different ones. And I ended up liking difference the best because what I felt like with this layer mode is that it blended and created that super cool like outline and stuff. I really like the way that looked like a glowing edge almost. So when you're working with um, a layer mask, you can control which areas are going to show through below the black and white and which areas are going to stay visible on top. So I did that with that layer. And then I also added this pink layer for his shirt, you can see. And I also changed to a different layer mode there. I changed it to darken. There are lots and lots of layer modes that you can play with. I happen to like darken on that one. And let's see. Oh, I think I added yellow to his eyes first period because I was demonstrating that. Okay, so let's say this one's done and you're like, yes, I like it. So you can back out up in the corner there, you hit that little arrow and it takes you back. And then I suggest naming it. So that's what I did. I named it Pop Styles One, which I thought was a very clever name because it's kind of a pun. And then you're gonna wanna duplicate it. So you hit duplicate and then let's say you open up your duplicate. So that was like my first one that I duplicated. And then I was ready to make a, another version because you need four of these. Because remember, where am I? This one. This is what Andy Warhol's work looked like. Usually it was prevented, presented 
in a series and there were variations between them even though they were related. Okay, so when you open it up, um, the copy, then you can manipulate that copy um, kind of, you know, on its own. So let me make sure I'm not screwing anything up. I'm gonna actually make another copy. So let me duplicate this and I will open up the copy. And when I'm opening up this copy now, I can take my layers and I can be like this layer, delete, this layer, delete, this layer, delete, delete, delete. And now what I have is just my like base adjusted layer ready to be worked on. So I can show you a couple of those things. Plus there are other ways. So like, for example, here is, let's see, um, maybe I, I think I wanna use that pink again because it goes great with his aesthetic. And now I'm going to make a new layer and uh, let's see. So I, sh I can show you a couple. So here is, <coughs> excuse me, how you use the paint bucket. <laughs> Literally just pick my color, paint bucket, tap it down. Now this does not look good, right? So I could lower the opacity, maybe not forever, but maybe just for a second. Then I can add a mask, which is that rectangle and the circle on the side. See that? Now, if I use my paintbrush, better check what brush I have. Okay, hard round, that looks good. And then um, by getting on my mask here, wherever I paint will show through to the black and white layer below. So I'm kind of doing this, you know, in a rush. Actually, am I in, I am in Photoshop. So I could go to this layer and now oh, that was handy. I like that. Um, how can I use that to my advantage? I think that I will, um, I selected the subject and now I'm hitting, oh, I definitely didn't mean that. Now I'm going back to my mask and I'm going to use a paintbrush and just really quickly erase everything inside that selection. So the background is gonna all be pink. Okay, now I have to decide if I want to change that layer mode, but I don't think so, but I'm definitely gonna bring up the pink background. Okay, so there's my first color. That's, that's fun. Kind of wish I had feathered that selection, but I don't care that much. Okay, so now I'm gonna add another layer. And this layer, uh, maybe for this layer, um, uh, I'm gonna paint his skin. And this one, I think I'll use yellow. Now, last time we used the selection. I don't think I need to use that this time. I'm just gonna try to be careful. So we'll go with this. Now, right now, I don't have any different settings on this layer mode. So I'm probably gonna want to change that. Now, if I was not doing a hack job, I'd probably get like, um, I wanna get in close with a better um, paintbrush. Right, so like, just to do a little bit better. Oh, that's too tiny. Just do a little better in there. Okay, so let's see how that does. Now, I'm not gonna wanna leave it like that. That's scary. So now, Let's try seeing what looks good here. Now that's interesting because it sticks to only some parts, color burn, I'm gonna try to remember. I might come back to that. That's kind of interesting too. I wonder what that would look like if I 
find it. No, I don't like that. So this is how you might go through looking at how different layer modes blend, how things look. That's weird. No, I don't like that one either. It's all, they're going to be different depending on what the color is, what else is behind it. Okay, I think there was one up on the top. What was it? Was it just darken? Oh no, I liked color burn. I think I will use that. Okay, so this is how you'd work your way through making um, the different versions. So when I go back, you can see I'm working my way through. I would not leave that white in his hair. I'd either um, color his hair or go back in and erase that from the mask so that the pink showed. Now I'm getting pretty far along in my number of copies. So what would eventually happen is that I would make those into flat um, JPEGs, you know, we export them, which I've showed you a bunch of times. And then I would put those onto one canvas so that in the end, they look like Marilyn Monroe down there in the corner. Okay, does anybody have any questions about how to work your way through um, some of those ideas in making um, Andy Warhol type um, portraits?